Expectations are sky high in the air capital of the world. Sixth ranked Wichita State returns all seven of their top scores from a team that won 31 games last season. The College of Charleston also with high hopes with all five starters returning to a team that barely missed the dance. The atmosphere is sure to be electric at the roundhouse as the Cougars and Shockers collide. Welcome inside Charles Koch Arena, game number two of the season. The Shockers have won 60 of their last 61 in this building. It's the College of Charleston out of the CAA against number six, Wichita State. Here courtside, Brent Silver alongside Bob Wenzel. The Shockers have won at least one game in the NCAA tournament each of the last five seasons. It's amazing what Greg Marshall has built here, yet this might be the most explosive team they've had yet. No doubt about that. They are talented, they are experienced, and they are deep. That is a formula for success. They are, however, without Marcus McDuffie, who's probably their best player. Out all of the preseason until conference play with a broken foot. You know who else has had foot issues? That's Landry Shamit. Nevertheless, he's in there and scored 17 in the opener. This guy is a six foot five inch point guard with long arms, second or third team All American. Great player. Coast to coast level speed. He's a great passer and a great outside shooter. You can see his numbers from last season. In the game against Kentucky, he had 20 points in the NCAA tournament in that three-point loss and zero turnovers. All kinds of things going on with Landry Shemin. They are new to the American Conference, might have the best backcourt duo in the entire league. Speaking of backcourt, Joe Cheely, preseason player of the year in the CAA, leads College of Charleston. Big numbers last year in points and assists. 6'4", 190 pounds from Orlando, Florida. He has to have the game of his life tonight. They won in overtime against Siena Friday night 68-60 he came up big. It's the College of Charleston Cougars and the sixth ranked Wichita State Shockers when we come back. The CAA collides with the American Conference inside the roundhouse tonight. Greg Marshall moments ago inside the Wichita State locker room. The other way they can beat us is if they come in here and play harder or smarter than us. Is that going to happen? No, sir. Okay, they, got, they cannot come in here and play harder nor smarter than us. All right? And lastly, just you know, <laughs> cherish the opportunity tonight. Cherish the opportunity. All right? Moved up to sixth in the country today. You're playing a very good team that will probably end up in the NCAA tournament in front of the best fans in the country. Cherish this opportunity. Go out and have fun. Let's go. Yes, and Bob, tonight's starting lineups. Well, Grant Riller scored seven points in overtime in their win against Siena. He was the star in that particular game. The backcourt of Shamit and Fran Camp are excellent shooters. Daryl Willis and Shaquille Morris provide very good strength on the inside. McManus and Harris are going to have to do yeoman's work because their best interior player, Jarrell Brantley, is out for this game with a knee problem. Here we go, Cougars and Shockers. And the opening tap controlled by Connor Frankamp, the redshirt senior from Wichita North High School. Landry Shamit to Frankamp in the corner. Man-to-man -man defense by the Cougars, calling card for them. There's Shaq Morris in that Dara Willis. Willis had a double-double in the opener. Frankamp scores. Figure beauty. Teamwork. Five guys touch it. Layup. Willis, a beautiful feed, the senior from Madison, Wisconsin, 19 points, 10 boards in the opening, thrilling of UMKC. Patience, Cougars, it's a virtue on the road against the sixth ranked team. You gotta have it, but you also have to have somebody to create at the end of the shot clock. This is the guy, Joe Chile, preseason player of the year in the CAA. Kicks it out, three, too strong from Jalen McManus. Here's Willis, down low, Shaq Morris, back down, spins and scores. Power! 6'8", 260. Senior. Six seniors on this team, Brett, and they're all good. 
How's this atmosphere uh, fear, uh, for you tonight, Bob? I am loving it. Chile turned the corner, got blocked by Zach Brown. Out of bounds, stays at this end. Move without the ball. Make passes and good screens leads to this. And then power inside. No double team, no problem for Shaq Morris. Cam Johnson draws the double. Here's Nick Harris. And now Joe Cheely, shot clock at eight. Grant Riller works on Frank King. Riller with four, pulls it. Too strong. Rebound ripped out of there by Morris. We should keep an eye on Zach Brown guarding Cheely. Zach Brown's a great defensive player. Cheely is going to have his hands full with Brown. And now foul on McManus, his first sophomore from Charlotte. 6'7", 215. Craig Marshall, six straight years to the NCAA tournament and 456 wins overall. 11th season here in Wichita, formerly at Winthrop in South Carolina. Fran Kent guarded by Riller. A three straight away, Morris off the heel. And a foul on the rebound, late whistle against Zach Brown. This year, Greg Marshall is allowing his post players to shoot threes. And they went four for five in their first game. Earl Grant cut his teeth under Greg Marshall, three years as an assistant at Winthrop, and then three under Greg Marshall here at Wichita State. He helped get the program going. <laughs> the two talked this morning and said, why, why on earth are we playing this game? Cheely fall away, knocks it down. First bucket of the game for Charleston. He's got to have a big night, and he is perfectly capable of doing so. He was the fourth leading scorer in the CAA a year ago, 18 a game. Morris strong, blocks, got it back and scores. Repetitive jumping. You got to have it. It was Willis that time underneath, cleaning it up. Willis is a left-handed player. He is starting in place of McDuffie, who's the all-conference player. Chile. I am surprised that Shamit was on Chile. Brown's a better defender than Landry. He defends Johnson. Corner three, McManus. Not there. Controlled, but out of bounds. Nick Harris was on the end line. 6-2, nearly three minutes deep as we check out the keys here tonight, Bob. Uh, I love being in the roundhouse, Brent. We love coming here. Gerald Brantley's physicality has to be replaced by a team effort by the college. He's their best interior guy. Tempo control, important for them. Shoot quick on the break, but then keep the ball in your hands. Live up to the number six <laughs> ranking and dominate the paint by the Shockers. Fall away, Willis, not there. Weak side board. Yeah, Craig said he was going through some of the preseason publications. They were third and sometimes fourth. And he's seeing teams like Duke and Kentucky behind him. And he's like, is this reality right now? <laughs> <laughs> One and done again there for the Cougars. Here come the Shockers leading by four. When you win 30 games or more in four out of the last five years, you should be in that stratosphere. Skip across, corner. Shaman left it short. Good save, but it was out of bounds. Good effort by Zach Brown. And to that point, they were seventh last week, the Shockers. It was Kentucky who's been totally unimpressive in the first two games, actually falling behind the Shockers in this week's rankings. And that was the team that knocked them out in the round at 32 in that phenomenal back and forth game last year. Big thing, of course, for Wichita State, they move from the Missouri Valley Conference to the American Athletic Conference. So can they be 17 and one and 16 and two every year like they were in the Missouri Valley? I doubt that. The Americans got some very, very good teams. Cincinnati has been picked in front of Wichita State this year in the polls in the preseason. In the overall national rankings, the Bearcats behind him. And Mick Cronin's got a heck of an offensive team. He's always good defensively. As you look at the AP top 10, hot off the wire here today. Well, those are the names that you would expect to be there, teams that have won national championships. And right there on the top of the second page is Wichita State. And they will be going out to Hawaii to play after this game. And then two SEC teams after them. Be a good cage for the Shockers in the Maui Invitational. That opening game against Cal. Then it's either VCU or Marquette. Michigan is also in that tournament. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. 
Grant Brewer. Nerger is in number 20, back up center. Very, very solid player. And Cam Johnson travels. Tough start. Charleston just one of six. And another turnover right there. Evan Bailey in the game, number 11 for Earl Grant. He is an outside shooter, and they've been shooting blank so far, so he's trying to get a little shooting in the game. They were just 5 of 25 on threes in the opener, yet won the game in OT. They're 0 for 3 at the arc so far here. 6-2 Shockers, the nation's number 16 at the under 16 here in Wichita. At the early 6-2 advantage. Well, Marcus McDuffie right there in your picture is a all-conference player, leading scorer from last year's team. All-American caliber player for the Shockers. He is not playing, will be out with a broken foot until conference play begins, we are told by Greg Marshall. And on the, on the other side, we tried to show you Jarrell Brantley. There he is, 6'7", 250, junior, first team all-conference and the defensive player in, of the year. They are going to miss him badly, but he will be back shortly, we were told, by Earl Grant at practice today. Shaman out of the timeout, pinned against the glass that time by Nick Harris, junior from Dakula, Georgia. 6'10". Marquise Pointer in off the bench for the Cougars. Here's Harris on the block, working on Ronald Nurger. Pointer, double. Man, shot clock at 10. Look at the defense of the Shockers. They move their feet. <laughs> he hedges without fouling. Riller hangs and got fouled. A late whistle again on Connor Framkamp. When you're 6'10", you're near the basket. You can block shots of a guy who's going to be in the NBA someday, Landry Shamit. Very good block by Harris. Willer's an experienced guy on the line. Averaged 13 points a game last year, Brent. And in their win over Siena, he had seven points in the overtime to win it for them. Another Florida native. He had 21 overall. To get him off of the right foot. Full court pressure, first time for the Cougars. I like this. Change up when you're playing a superior opponent. If you can, if you have in your arsenal different defenses, rather use them to change up the pace. And the depth helps with that. Even without McDuffie, they can go 11 deep. Willis got fouled on the way up. Terrell Willis, senior from Madison. Faded a bit down the stretch last year. Shot there is Zach Brown, senior from Houston. Willis is a guy who they're going to go to plenty right here. You can see he's a left-handed player. He's playing in Marcus McDuffie's spot right now. And I'll tell you what, he has shown that he can do some damage. 6'9", big guy. Could not shoot well from the outside last year. A little bit of an awkward technique to his shot. But Greg Marshall told us that he's more confident in him. He's putting a lot of work. Here's Richard Kelly, the X Factor of this team. Senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hustle guy. Yeah, blue collar. And Willis. Rebounded right by away. Kelly. <laughs> on cue. He comes in and gets an offensive rebound off a missed free throw. Willis strong Ooh. to the class. <laughs> Man, was that quick and powerful. <laughs> We got another lefty in the game right now. Also, Samaje Haynes Jones, number four in white. JC transfer. I can't wait to watch this kid play. He is quick on quick. Corner three, a guarded one, and it's down anyway from Cam Johnson. You talked about how experienced the College of Charleston is. Bunch of guys who played, all five starters back. Haynes Jones off the front iron. Richard Kelly wouldn't go. Nurser, no. Haynes Jones slippery in there. In rhythm, Shamit fouled on the three. Good action at the Shockers' offensive end. Man, they get after it on the offensive glass. Four guys were in the paint right here. Watch this move. Look one way, go the other. Little hook with his right arm and using the glass. This guy is a player. Fake, go, power, man. 
They can go to him and Morris on the block. That's dangerous, Brent. Mm. You mentioned the loss of Brantley here tonight for the Cougars, and they're looking at the long game. He's going to be fine. Of course, you want him in this game. Between Brantley and Chile, the number 12 in the entire country, the number 12 scoring duo in the nation coming back this season. So that's a huge loss. Brantley and Chile, just a perfect combination out there. Average 32 a game combined last season. Yeah, and it, and it was inside outside. They don't get in each other's way either. Without Brantley, Chile has to adjust and find some other guys. Their inside game has not been really very good with Harris and McManus so far. Collegeinsider.com, they always have that ranking in the top mid-majors. And this team right here is the number four team behind Gonzaga, St. Mary's, Vermont, then it's Charleston. So high hopes from a 25-win team. And now an elbow off the inbound, Bailey going to pick it up. Right here, the pressure is on. He turns, pushes off. Good defense. Look at the length of Willis right there. Earl Grant's confused about that, doesn't like the call. And Bailey right back to the bench. 12 7, nearly six minutes in. Haynes Jones, Chuko All American from Hutch Chuko here in. The state of Kansas, a Wichita native. Won the state high school championship here at Wichita North, then wins the Juco national championship at Hutch. He is used to winning. And then a travel, and then a dream come true. A dream come true. His uh, his mother died when he was a junior in high school, and he, in terms of next to Kim, it's his sister, who's about 11 years older. And she came into Coach Marshall's office when they extended him the invitation for a scholarship to come here after his JUCO career was done. And he said she absolutely broke down in tears when she came in. Are you really serious, Coach, that you're giving my son a scholarship? That was his mother's dying wish, to get a full-ride scholarship at Wichita State to play college basketball. Nice. Nice. Three-pointer off the mark. Weak side board, Richard Kelly. Ahead to Shamit. Nice catch. Nurture draws the double, turns it over to Johnson. Five-point game, 13 and a half to play, opening half. The hedge by Nurture. Here comes Johnson. Lost it on the way in. It'll stay at this end. Cougars are starting to play with a little bit more confidence. Earlier in the game, they were a little shaky, but the Shockers did not put them away. Their mantra is defense and rebounding under Earl Grant. Nine wins his first year, 17 his second, and 25 last year in his three years. Pretty good development, I'd say. Another Charleston turnover, the travel on McManus. They like McManus, he's a four-man on this team. He is starting in place of Brantley. Different kind of game, though. Thinner, more outside, not a pounder in the paint like Brantley is. Haynes Jones, and now Willis. Pull up. Got it. So he's shown a standstill jumper. He's shown a power move on the glass, and he's shown a pull up. Pretty good three levels of offense by Willis. He's got seven on three of five. Chile. Haynes Jones defends. Tough shot, and he banks it home. He's a player, huh? Doesn't he look like one? Mm. Very calm. Grant told his team today, we got nothing to lose. We're rolling in here against the nation's number six. Play loose and free. Haynes Jones, not there. And a rebound by Chile. Good no call there in the backcourt. Chile knifing in, draws the bump. So he certainly is not going to shy away from trying to put this team on his shoulders here. No, I think he's capable. I mean, he wants to do it. He takes the challenge. He realizes that Shamit is a second or third team All-American, depending on who you're talking to. He wants to show that he can play with those players. Some substitutions both sides right now. The pace of play has been good. The intensity has been very good. Shamit goes to the bench, and now they play with a small backcourt with Haynes Jones and Connor Frankamp in the game at the same time. Solid D. 
Now there's attention to detail, right? Don't just let them inbounds the ball, right? Defend something, deny it, try to get an extra possession. That's what good teams do. Earl Grant's team preseason favorites in the CAA. He was the coach of the year in the league last year. They have a game at the end of the non-conference against Rhode Island. He said, we got to win tonight and win that one and then take care of business in the non-con or in the conference if we want any chance of an at-large bid. Otherwise, it comes down to those three days in the conference tournament to make the dance. Timeout, Wichita State leading by five. 12.09, opening half. He is somebody that I respect, and he is somebody we spend a lot of time talking on the phone. And, and so, you know, if, I, if we do win, I mean, I probably won't talk to him for a couple, two, three weeks. <laughs> we had three great years together there. He followed me to Wichita State. We had, he helped us get this thing going with three more years. And now he's a head coach, and he's doing a marvelous job at Charleston. That program is on the right track. It looks like they could be an NCAA tournament team this year. And my mentor, his mentor as well, John Cress, is really happy with the trajectory of the program. So I, that's all I need to know. Certainly the coaching tree began with John Cress. Earl Grant was an assistant under Marshall at Winthrop from 04 to 07. And then three seasons here in Wichita from 07 to 2010. Good combination, the John Cress coaching tree. And what we've seen in this game from these two gentlemen is their adherence to defense and rebounding. Both teams are playing solid D. Each of the two teams are shooting 33% from the field right now. So it's good, good to see. It's always a very funny thing when you play against a friend. Fran Camp drills the three. Woo! Transfer from Kansas. Big deal last year here, but didn't feel confident all the time. Marshall told us to practice today that Connor Fran Camp's playing the best he's ever played right now. Nine assists in their first game. Chile. And a travel in the paint. On Harris, fifth College of Charleston turnover. It is rare so far in this game to see an inside play where a guy gets a clean and easy shot. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Charleston is double teaming the post all the time. And then, of course, the physicality of the Shockers every time the ball goes in the paint is part of their DNA. Shaq Morris. Haynes Jones. Morris wants to go. Banks it home. <laughs> Tough shot. We've seen him do that before. Big numbers last year. Great career here. It's a 10-2 shocker run. And now Charleston needs an answer at this end. Good position, but Morris made it a highly contested shot. When you put 260 pounds on somebody's body, they can't jump. Nurser got blocked underneath. Chile out of there with it. Chile floater. Ripped out of there by Kelly. The college does not want this. Quick shot means disaster. Morris, too easy. Twice in a row, they get it inside. And Morris produces. Time for a timeout or go deep into the shot clock here. Sheely draws the pump. Traveled before the pump. Another turnover. Shaq Morris can dominate in the paint. He's done it many times to a lot of teams, and he's done it the last two possessions. Right here, a little hop step and a jump before the foul. Pretty good call by Gerald Williams on that one. I love this kid, Morris. He is so physical. That's the reason that they can play with the Kentuckys of the world. He's got 100 career blocks. And he handled Kentucky's bigs well in the dance last year. Nurser. How about that pass? 23-9 <laughs> here in Wichita. 
They love you, Shaq. The senior is doing it. Drive, spin, off the board, and in. This time, I'm taking you to the paint. Shaq, doing it. They've won 60 of their last 61 games in the building. And the sellouts nearly every night. And all but one of the home games will be played right here on campus. Very tough place to win, not only because of the crowd. It's such a great crowd. 10,789 is capacity here. So it's not huge like some arenas, but they sell out every single game nearly. Points in the paint has been big in this game so far. First play of the game, Grand Camp gets a layup off of a complicated play. Then they go inside. The repetitive jumping of Willis gets it done. And then right here, take him off the dribble and use the backboard. He uses his body so well. Morris is a guy who plays bigger than his 6'8 size. 16 and they're 23 in the paint. Largest lead of the game. Haynes Jones defense on Sheila. Marshall thinks Haynes Jones can be an NBA guy. That is high praise from a guy who knows. They didn't think Fred Van Vliet or Baker would be NBA players, and they are. Tough shot, Harris wouldn't go. Morris clears it. 23-9, and looking for more. Double dribble, Haynes Jones, and a shocker turnover. Talking about Haynes Jones today at the shoot around, I talked to him, he was the first one out here, and I asked Greg Marshall about him, and he said, you know, he's still got a lot to learn, you know, he's used to just going and blowing by people. You know, it's different in junior college than it is in Division I at his level, of course. He says, but he's learning, he's got a good head, he's uh, a good kid, he's got the tools to do it. The only thing he's done wrong, a couple times in practice, he's made a pass that was mishandled and shaking his head at the teammate. Marshall said, we got, we got tired of that real quick and said, listen, we don't do that here. We don't show up our teammates. He learned and he's good. Other than that, it's been perfect. Riller to the rim, couldn't finish. One and done again for the Cougars. Austin Reeves is in the game. Shoulder. Zach Brown, way off. He's had some right shoulder issues. Pistol Pete is the comparison his coach gives to him. Cheely floats into the lane and draws the whistle. Foul on Shaman. Cheely seems to be better right now, don't you think, in transition? When they're in the setup five on five and there's 10 players between the three point line and the basket too crowded. When he comes down in transition, there's only two or three guys back. He's finding some seams and getting into the paint for opportunities. The problem is Earl Grant told us we got to run some of these shot clocks deep so we can run their guards yeah. around a little bit, make them work on defense so they're not so fresh at the offensive end. But it's not working. No. I think that they've got to try to score quickly in the quick runouts in transition. And then, if you don't have it, you know, you try to go deep into the shot clock. There's Reeves. Yeah. You can see the shoulder uh, kinesiology tape on his shoulder. Zach Brown, shot clock at nine. Morris lost it. Ties to the deck. What an effort. But he was the last to touch it. Mm. They're show, showing us their signature. He makes a bad play, but dives at it. Could have hit his head right there. Great hustle. Great job by our crew here in Wichita. Good look. 23-11. Miller has been really not much of a factor, and he's their second leading scorer. Chile too strong. Harris offensive board, and here's Riller. They need another scorer, clearly, and Riller's the guy. Bailey in rhythm. Ooh. Off the mark, Brown clears it. Notice how Frank Camp always has his head up. 
Morris got it. That was nice. Two-man game between two seniors who know how to play. Morris and Fran King. The lead back to 14. Chile pulls it. Off the mark. Grand Camp can play the two or the one. Count in the air and draws the bailout foul on Riller. Two-man game. Grand Camp and Morris. Nothing but the bottom, 25-11. Tulane, Cam Reynolds, most improved player in the American. 17.7 rebounds a game, much expected out of him going into this season. Two-man game between Connor Francam and Shaq Morris. Right here, the screen is going to be set. The dribble is coming, and then the pass will go back. Watch number 23 slide with Fran Camp, and when he does, Shaq is wide open for a free throw line jumper. Great execution by the Shockers. First time Fran Camp is not given way to some of the other stars on the team, and Marshall loves that leadership. Him really taking ownership in his final go around here in Wichita. We were talking to him also uh, individually, and, and he told us he wasn't sure what he wanted to do after graduation, but he wants to do something with basketball. And, you know, obviously he's not an NBA level player, but uh, he can play somewhere. I mean, there's teams all over the world now. <laughs> basketball is very popular in China, it's always been popular in Europe. And, uh, you know, some of these teams can have a couple of Americans on their team. So, uh, I'm sure he's going to try to investigate that. Well, your son is an assistant coach in China. Maybe, we'll, maybe we can hook maybe it up there. Hook him up there. <laughs> hey, hey, shooting never goes out of style. You can find a, a place for a dead-eye shooter you got, somewhere. You got that right. 27 to 11 meantime here. The Shockers have put a stranglehold on their preseason favorite out of the CAA. Well, when I was preparing for this game and uh, the College of Charleston played Siena and it was an overtime game and I looked at the stats right after the game and they shot 5 for 25 from three-point range in that game and I thought, uh-oh, this could be a little bit of a problem. And then when Brantley was, we were told Brantley did, wasn't going to play in this game, so there goes your inside game. So it's going to be tough, tough sledding for the college here. Evan Bailey parries it. He's there. Use a little more of that, huh? Yeah, he's their three-point specialist off the bench, a senior from Canton, Ohio. They are now two for 18 from beyond the arc. There's you getting a lot of points on here, number 20 in white. Willis got it. Wow. Wow. Watch out, AAC coaches. He's going to be hard to guard. We have Morris knocking him down from outside. Willis on threes. Paley wants it again. And this time won't go. Long rebound. Austin Reeves. And now Rashard Kelly. Willis. And now Reeves. They probe the interior, don't they? Friend Kemp, fall away three, left it short. Yeah, they do. You probe the interior, you get people to come down there, and then you get open threes. No double team. Cam Johnson. Harris needs to go if he's not double teamed. Make a move. Pointer with 10 to shoot. Around and out, pulled down by Willis. Five men touching the ball on most possessions in the half court. Kelly off the leg of Chile on the help side deep. I like the double teaming that uh, Earl Grant's employing. And 
ball gets near either by pass or dribble to the paint. Okay, they go. try to come and double and trap. It's been effective. Willis. And Bailey gets hammered by Kelly. We should mention again that Marcus McDuffie is not playing for the Shockers. McDuffie was their leading scorer and rebounder last year. He's a junior, six foot eight, 220. There he is. He has a bone fracture in his foot and will not be ready to play until the conference games. And when he comes back, watch out. In his stead, Willis is really doing a very, very nice job. And, and that could be news. I'm glad you said it, Bob. I think a lot of people thought, hey, sometime maybe in early December. But it's looking like they're not going to have him the entire non-conference now. That's what they told us. Yep. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Adam Zucker in New York takes a look back into Wichita State's incredible 2013 run to the Final Four. Plus first half highlights and stats from here inside the roundhouse. All coming up on AT&T at the half. What a run that was. Down there in Atlanta. Woo. And they were within a whisker of taking down Louisville. Questionable tie-up call late in that game that uh, people around here have not forgotten. <laughs> it went against the Shockers. <laughs> 30 to 16, four and a half to play. Kelly with a screen by Willis. Kelly attacks. Kelly working inside, but it's pulled down by Bailey. Pointer. Stop and start, pat it out of the air. Bailey kept it alive, but threw it away. You know, a thing I'm watching this up close here, and another thing that impresses me about Wichita State, they get back and identify. It's one thing to get back and just get back on defense. It's another thing to get back and communicate with your teammates so everybody's got somebody. Even though it's not your man, if he's in your area, you take him, and your teammate adjusts and takes up yours. Very impressive. Nurser left alone. You pet. I guess anybody's got the green light from outside of the Shocker team. Largest lead of the game at 17. And that'll get us to the under four here in Wichita. Nurser, 6'10. His man goes, he gets the ball, knocks it in. Beautiful. Looks back, the number one team last week fell to Auburn at number 10. A rough day for everybody. See how far they drop in the rankings. Still a dang good team there as they play against Kentucky Saturday on CBS. Another two-man game right here. Now watch Nerger come up, and right from here, watch number 23. He is hedging and goes with the dribbler, and as a result, the pass goes back here, and Nerger makes a three. Same play as they ran with Morris a second ago. Wide open for a three, top of the key. They need to stay home with the screener because it is giving them fits. One and one for Charleston. Cam Johnson. Austin Reeves back in for Wichita State. Austin Reeves back in for the Shockers. What's up? What's up? What's up? Talking about Georgia, the senior Johnson from Athens. Gets one of two. Nurture the rebound. 33 17. 3.45 opening half. A whistle here. Uh, something got loose onto the court. Free throw numbers. Both teams shooting them well at the stripe in this first half. We talked about the depth of uh, Wichita State, and they are displaying it in this game. Points in the paint 16 to 2. Points off turnovers 12 to nothing. Greg Marshall's team is playing to their normal standard here in this game. Five straight NCAA tournament trips with at least a win. They've been to the big dance overall six straight years. Deflected away, corralled by Nurser. 
And if Mick Cronin is watching, the head coach of Cincinnati, he would like us to say that his team has made it seven years in a row. Merger slips free. This kid's athletic. Merger is 6'10 and can really move. How great is the battle going to be in the Shockers' opening year in the American with them and Cincinnati? Oh, Cincinnati's got everybody back except their backcourt. And they have a transfer coming in also named Kane Broom. And Kane Broom has taken over the point guard position for them that was ably held before. But everybody else is back, and they are looking solid. And it's not just rock solid deep, which they built this great run on. It's a fun offense to watch now at Cincinnati. Two shots, double bonus. Chile knocks in the first. Shaq Morris back in. been a force four of six from the field eight points four rebounds he scores from everywhere on the floor he's allowed to shoot threes now and he is a physical presence on defense red shirt senior Edmond Oklahoma two small players in the backcourt now Fran Camp and Haynes Jones Shot clock at eight, Morris, got it. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> they say he's a big body that bangs well, but with a soft touch, I'll say. Corner three, Cam Johnson spins out, rebounded by Morris, who else? He's got 11 points and five boards, and he's knocked down a couple from outside. Nurser on the block, wheels and scores. Bailey can't guard Nurser in there. Bailey's 6'6 and thin. Nurser is 6'10 and powerful. Chile trying to answer. Ripped down by Haynes Jones and a foul on Chile with a minute 45 and the Shockers are rolling. Check this out. This ball goes out of camera range almost. He shoots it so high. And then inside Nurger fakes to his right, comes back with his left hand. Right handed player in the interior. You have to be able to shoot with both hands, right? and he can do it. There are some of the top teams in the country that have won so far, but maybe not all that impressively. Kentucky comes to mind. This Shocker team outscored UMKC Friday night, 62-23 in the opening half. They won it 109-57, shot 61%. And here they are against one of the best mid-majors in the country going in, and it's 41-19. Wow. They can do it. That's why you get that number six by your name early on. Forty-two nineteen, final minute forty. Largest lead of the game for Wichita State. They're on a twelve-three run. Diving again for the loose ball, Morris. Fran Kemp on the deck. Morris got it. Here's Haynes Jones to the rim. Turn on the afterburners. McManus knocks it down. McManus is their four man, but he's so much more comfortable on the outside. In a game like this, that's not great. Morris again! <laughs> 
final 26 seconds. Eight second difference came and shot. 47-22. Five to shoot, pointer on Haynes Jones, got in the air, circus shot, no, six seconds to play, Fran Camp with four, Fran Camp with three, no, Nurger at the buzzer, wouldn't fall. They are relentless, and they can shoot. Good combination for winning. The Shockers shoot 50% from the field. They lead 47-22 after the break. Send it out to support New York with at and You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network. Number six, Wichita State. Leads Charleston 47-22 as the second half begins. Join the women of We Need to Talk to bring you unparalleled perspectives on everything that's happening in the world of sports. With special guest, New Orleans Saints coach Sean Payton, tomorrow night, 8 Eastern only on CBS Sports Network. The Saints 7 and 2, fresh off their 47 10 road thrashing of the Buffalo Bills yesterday. So Payton's got it rolling, just like Wichita State does. They got snubbed with a 10 seed last year, and the big dance ended up against a really good Kentucky team and went toe to toe back and forth. Final seconds, a three point shot by Shamit gets blocked, and the Wildcats win by three. Well, they showed the world a lot in that game, and the players who were playing in that game, they're playing in this game tonight because all of those guys are back. Reached the NCAA tournament last six years as coach Greg Marshall. And of course, one of those times they were in the final four. Another time they were undefeated going in to the tournament. And Landry Shamit right there in your picture is a second team All-American, one of the best guards in the country. Coming back from a broken foot in his right foot, and he had a broken foot in his left foot a couple of years ago. And you gotta wonder about uh, how well he is feeling. There's the final four, Bannon. Big stuff, man. Big, big stuff. Second half begins. Charleston down big. Here's Grant Riller, Cam Johnson, and Joe Chile. Riller needs to get off a little bit here. Johnson in the lane. Tap try wouldn't go. And a foul on the rebound. Cam Johnson is known as a defensive player, sort of like uh, Zach Brown is for Wichita State. But he's trying to put some uh, points on the board. Harris is going to the line, had a couple of blocks in the first half. But he has been caught a lot in that high pick and pop situation at the top of the key where he's going with the dribbler instead of staying with his man. Let's see if Coach Grant adjusts that because it's really hurt them a lot in the first half. And foul on Zach Brown is third, so he's going to sit. 11 points against Siena, nine rebounds for that gentleman. Important player, Zach Brown. When they play against SMU, he may have to guard Shake Milton, you know, when he plays against UConn, maybe Terry Larrier. Guys like that, he becomes very, very vital. SMU, UConn, perhaps the third and fourth teams in the American going in in terms of ranking. Yeah, yeah I think so. UConn UCF is... also. Oh, man. UCF. B.J. Taylor's a star, so is the big man, Taco Fall. Seven foot six, off the handoff. Drop it down, good passing underneath, and the finish by Morris. Wow. Depth in the front court. You're seeing it, you're witnessing what that means to a team. 16 on seven and nine for Morris. Driller. McManus pulls it off the mark. Rebounded by the Shockers. Fran Camp head up at all times. Morris attacks again. 
Shamit. Stole it away. Chile. Nice D by Chile. Great anticipation. Chile all the way off the side of the glass. Shamit on the run out for Wichita State. Fran Camp pulls it. Left it short. Weak side board. I'm seeing some fatigue on the Charleston players as they jog by here right now. Especially Harris. He hasn't had a lot of. There's no depth at his position. He's got to play a lot of minutes. He's feeling it right now. Number 23. Johnson off the window. Wouldn't fall. And corralled by Morris. Willis off the front iron and a foul on the rebound. Opening play of the first half. Check this out right here. Screen and roll. Pass comes in and they dish right there to Morris and he gets the ball. Good three man game. Easy play. Nice execution. When you screen for somebody and then you end up getting the shot. That's a good lesson to learn. Screens become more effective that way. Fran Camp off the curl. By the way, Charleston is a good team. One of the best mid-majors going in. Right up there, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and then. So that should tell you just how good this Wichita State team is. We said coming on the air that yes, they've won at least one game in the big dance five years in a row, but this might be their most explosive team yet. And they're exploding right now. How about that? Morris, way outside, passes to the point guard on the interior. A little roll reversal. Joe Chile, nothing easy. Riller. Floats in against the double, blocked but fouled. They contest everything everywhere. Watch the pass by Morris inside. He gets it at the top of the key. Bounce pass inside. Shamit catches it and puts it up in one motion. Those are basketball plays there. Second foul on Morris. Free throws for Riller. Something that bothers me, Bob. I still have to tell casual college basketball fans, friends of mine, you know, watch some college. They're more into it when it gets deep in March, which is a travesty in itself. <laughs> I still have to, 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 they're shocked when I tell them, hey, I've got sixth ranked Wichita State tonight. They, they still don't understand. This is a college basketball powerhouse. Oh, yeah. They don't okay. need any to do anything else to show that. Can you name any other team in the nation that has won? 30 or more games in the last four or five years? I'd be hard pressed. You can't. No, no doubt about it. The big test, of course, for those people who question them at all, and, and most basketball fans don't, but they're saying they came from a weak conference in the Missouri Valley. Here's the last five years. How do you like that? 30, 35, 30, 26, and 31. Final four, Sweet 16, Sweet 16, and round of 32. So not only are they going to the NCAA tournament, they are winning games in the NCAA tournament. I think there are only four or five teams that have actually, in the last five years, been to the tournament and won at least one game in the tournament. You gotta wonder about Shamit's condition. When you have a foot injury, it's hard to stay in shape because you know, you can't run, you can't do the things that you need to get your cardiovascular up as much. Offensive rebound by Johnson, stolen away by Frank Kim. We had a game last year in this building, a good game, where Frank Kim had five steals. Richard Kelly. Nobody home on defense there. Timeout.
Fatigue is the enemy of Charleston right now. Nobody home on this drive. News and notes in the American, and these were some of the guys that you were just talking about in this conference, Bob. Taco Fall, I think, led the nation in field goal percentage last year at seven foot six. Larrier sat out with a torn ACL, 27 in his first game back. And Shake Milton, who was a great player last year for SMU with uh, Ojale, averaged 20 plus in the first two games. Houston has Rob Gray, the American Athletic Conference, only four years old, are doing good, good things. Eighteen percent shooting for Charleston, just five for twenty-eight. Shot clock under ten. Johnson, and he rolls it in. Nice move. They're finding in this game Cam Johnson's offense. Last year, he only averaged seven a game. In this game, because other guys are not stepping up, Cam Johnson doing it. Nice play. So Wichita State ranked higher than Cincinnati, seven straight trips to the NCAA tournament. In terms of the conference preseason poll, got the top spot with Wichita State and UCF, SMU, UConn, and Houston. Rob Gray is a great player at Houston. Guard can really score. He's first team all conference. And of course, we talked about Shake Milton. Remember last year, they were dominated, SMU dominated by uh, Semi Ojale and Ben Moore and Sterling Brown, a bunch of uh, guys who were upperclassmen. I think Ojale is playing with the Celtics now. Jankovic, media day, has said oh, we're lucky to be alive if we get out of the non conference. <laughs> they have a brutal non conference schedule. There at SMU. Haynes Jones, Juco All American, Juco National Champ at Hutchinson Community College here in the state of Kansas, a product of Wichita East High School now. Comes back to finish out his college career at Wichita State. Shot clock at six, Darrell Willis the back down at Bailey. Tried to go up and under, and it's corralled by Riller. Sinachi smart big man screens and now Bailey smart wants it on the block smart didn't play it all in the first half he's got a big body they need to use him six to shoot Johnson spins and scores that's a taking it upon himself isn't he putting the ball on the floor going to the baskets he's not a shooter but he can take it Teams when they're this far ahead tend to have it and let down. <laughs> not the Shockers and not Willis. They're relentless, and we've seen it before. Yes, Remember indeed. a couple years ago, Missouri State in this building, they were blowing them out of the gym. Guys still diving all over, leaping into the passing lanes on defense. I think that's a great description and an apt word to describe it. Relentless. Three corner rattles out from Bailey. 58-29, Willis left alone, blocks. Good defense by O.C. Smart, and then the foul. That was Willis last time, drives right here, baseline. Finds a way to get to the basket. At 6-9, a facing player who can put the ball on the ground. Highly skilled. Sheely picked up that foul, his third, so he's going to exit. Nick Harris back in, McManus as well. Nurser for Wichita State. Nurser from overseas in Estonia. Willis from Wisconsin. So, uh, Marshall goes up. 
lots of different places to get players. And we asked him, is your recruiting going to get better now that you're in the American? And he emphatically said that it would. Interesting. I'd say it's been pretty good so far. <laughs> yeah. Marquise Pointer. Manis. And Riller. Johnson. Pointer with seven to shoot, and now Riller with five. Grant Riller knifing in. Finally, he's in the scoring column. Been a tough night for him. Sixty to thirty-one. Seven minutes deep. Second half. Austin Reeves. Reeves turning the corner and gliding in. He's got game. Because of the shoulder injury, he couldn't lift all summer during the rehab. So Greg Marshall told us he's got the skill, he's got the brains, he just doesn't have the strength. Hand check that on Haynes Jones and, and Reeves again. Marshall says he reminds him of Pistol Pete Maravich. He's got shorter hair, I can tell you that. <laughs> he has grown an inch or two, right? Yeah, you he know, looks like he's about six, seven or eight now, doesn't he? Yeah. I've got him at 6'5", but I boy, that doesn't seem to match up. Yeah, he looks bigger. <laughs> They've doubled him up, 62-31. Riller on Fran Camp and the foul. Second team preseason all CAA, Grant Riller, sophomore. Well, they just try to clear for him here and let him get a little bit of a gap. He does a nice job of pulling up instead of going all the way and using the glass. Elon and Towson are two other teams that are going to be the top teams in the Colonial. And uh, last year, the last couple of years, it's been UNC Wilmington. The tournament for the CAA is in Charleston, not on the university's court, but in North Charleston. So it's virtually home cooking for the College of Charleston in the tournament. We got the semis in the final right here on CBS Sports Network. Nurser, the back down, scores. He's a player. Remember we saw him last year and we were so impressed with him in practice and didn't play that well in the games we did. But man, I'll tell you, he can play. He's got games, he's athletic, strong. Harris on Nurser. Face up Harris. Back down Harris and floats it in. I'd like to see him do more of that. They need an inside presence. Willis short. Johnson pull up. And Willis fouled. No, he traveled. Turn up. 64 35. Ron on Nurser is at a big night. 11 points, three rebounds. All shockers. Nurser and his mates out of the time of their life here in Wichita tonight. Performance by the number six team here tonight. And the shooting percentages tell a lot. 52%, they were 50, and then they're 54 in the second half. They're shooting 90% from the free throw line. They're 10 out of 11 from there. So the shooting is good. The post players have dominated clearly. Willis and Morris have done very, very well, as, as has Nurger. The only other guy in double figures is Fran Camp, and he's got 10. And the roundhouse has been rocking. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
atmosphere never lets us down when we come here. Pull up Riller, knocks it down. Talked about uh, the Colonial Athletic Association tournament being in uh, North Charleston. The American Athletic Conference tournament is in Orlando, Florida, which is close, obviously, to the University of Central Florida. Haynes Jones short on the three. Nurgers flies in there for the rebound. And now Morris. And here comes Johnson. Riller deflected away at Haynes Jones. Haynes Jones to the rim. And he's at the line. He has great speed. There's no doubt about that. We're seeing that with Haynes Jones in this game. And of course, he's got a lot to learn, but he is learning. Judgment becomes the thing that is most apparent with uh, players that are new players to any program. When they have success at a lower level and they come to a higher level, some of the things that they do at the lower level don't work. So they've got to stay away from those kinds of things when they get to good time. A good guard in Dejon Smith last year, but he transferred out when he knew Haynes Jones was coming. It's yeah. you're gonna have to compete every day to get minutes on this team. Not only was Haynes Jones coming, but you know Shamit was here, so so uh, hard to find some minutes. Midway second half. Shockers about to be 2-0 and, oh, and then head to the Maui Invitational where they play Monday afternoon here local time. Over there in Hawaii taking on California. And then it's either Marquette or VCU. Chaminade, LSU, Michigan, Notre Dame also in that tournament. And a score from Nurser at Ken in the lane. When we mentioned that thing to Greg Marshall at practice today about the tournament that he's going to, he said, you know, right here, Nerds are doing a good, good job all throughout this game. He mentioned that the year that they went to the Final Four, they played in Cancun and they beat Iowa. So he's going to talk to his team about that and how good it can be for them to play in this tournament in Hawaii, which makes perfect sense. Also in the non-conference, they're playing Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Conspicuously absent is Kansas. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, they don't play. I don't think Bill Self is going to do it. Now, they did two years ago in the dance, and the, the Shockers got them. Hey, Earl Grant's on the other side. They're going to the Great Alaska Shootout, final year of that you know, long time, very good yes. tournament. And he said he puts a huge price on winning, as the shot block underneath, on winning an early season tournament. Yeah. Even though the teams there, the quality of competition isn't what it used to be. Interesting. Ah, there's a little coaching going on. <laughs> Did you see the look on his uh -huh. face on that pass? Yep. The pass was not there. It's Jones Hill inbound. 9.24 on the clock. 68-37. A foul. Morse. Before the inbound play. You know, now what Earl Grant, obviously this would be a big disappointment. And, 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 and boy, he would have loved to have had Terrell Brantley, one of his top players and one of the five, all five returning starters coming back this season. Yeah, but he couldn't uh, risk Brantley getting hurt further. They have Charlotte next. And, uh, you know, he would have made a difference. I'm not sure how much of a difference, but, you know, he's their best inside guy. And he could have given Morris some more trouble than Morris has had in this game. 25 win team lost in the title game to UNC Wilmington in the CAA tournament. Preseason favorites coming back. Incidentally, CB McGrath, long time on Roy Williams staff, the head coach now at UNC Wilmington in that league. Yep. Really a fun, very competitive league. You mentioned some of the other top teams minutes ago. Morris at the line. Up 
coming for the Shockers. Maui Jim, those are the teams. Baylor, South Dakota State always a really good. Do you have a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses? I need them. Oh, they're, they're great. Expensive, though. <laughs> kind of a Hawaii type guy living down there on the beach. <laughs> Ponte Vitro. <laughs> You still haven't invited me down in the off season I'm telling you. to your gated community mansion. Joe yeah. Chile around and out. Haynes Jones. See, there's judgment again. You know, I, I mean, I'm not surprised if he gets yanked right here. It's two or three plays in a row that his speed has worked to his detriment. Riller lays it home and the foul. You know, we're seeing some things out of Riller, aren't we, in the second half? You can see why he's a second-team all-conference player. He was invisible in the first half. In the second half, when the game's sort of out of hand, he's putting his head down and going. He's making really some very, very solid plays. Little ball fake here and drive to the baseline, uses his left hand. Third foul on Morris, uh, who has a double-double a double double already. Morris, 18 and 10 rebounds, 7 of 11 from the field, a couple of assists as well. Also, you know, you talk about the statistics of these teams offensively, the Shockers especially, but the things they do defensively, you know, just shutting your man down, not letting him turn the corner. That's not a stat, but that helps win. No. <laughs> Neither is diving on the floor, and Morris has done it by my count three times tonight going after loose balls. There you go. <laughs> Zach Brown. Stolen. Riller, one on one. Lays it home. <laughs> 70 to 42, eight to play. Four shockers going to come in at the next whistle. What do you bet Haynes Jones is coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. Reeves. Nurture. Rattles out, corralled by Zach Brown. And now Reeves weaving his way in traffic. And we'll go the other way. And now the four new shockers to come in, but we're at the under eight. All Wichita State here at the Roundhouse. The number six shockers. 2-0 to begin the season after tonight. In this day and age, we talk all about the freshmen. How about some non-freshmen as Grayson Allen coming back for his final go-around at Duke? These guys have all done it. And Joel Berry, of course, won a national championship last year. Injured now, but going to come back. Miles Bridges eschewed the money and stayed in college. Michigan State, I think, might be the best team in the country. And Jalen Brunson, of course, Villanova's cerebral point guard, Alonzo Trier, the swing man from Arizona, doing great things already. So those are the non-freshmen, and here are some freshmen that we like and that everybody likes. DeAndre Ayton at Arizona, Marvin Bagley, of course. People think he's going to be the first pick in the draft next year. Michael Porter Jr. in his first game did nothing, and uh, Missouri won big. And Colin Sexton had to sit out his first game at Alabama, but he will be back. And we had him last year at the Final Four in the slam dunk and three-point shooting contest. And he was delightful. Porter just didn't get to play much. Got dinged a little bit in the pregame warm-up. Only played a couple of minutes, knocked down his only shot. I tell you, Bagley at 25 and 10 in his first game, and he was almost as good, if not better, in the second game. He's the real deal. The Willis rattles out, rebound offensively. Ask Bjorn Mitgard. Seven-foot freshman from Denmark, Marshall says he is perhaps the most physically imposing player I've ever coached. 280 pounds, and because this is a senior-dominated team, that guy's going to play a lot next year. He wanted to redshirt him, but feels like he needs a lot of quality minutes this year because they're really going to need him next year. I agree with that. I, he needs to get on the floor and play in games. Redshirting him is not a good idea. So Midgard in late in this game. Marquise Pointer slicing in and scoring. There's Midgard, seven feet 
270, you think about 280, right? Yeah. Began playing basketball only six years ago. Rookie of the year in the Danish Basketball League. So they have uh, high hopes for this young man. Do you know what the translation for Asbjorn is in Danish? Tennis? <laughs> God's bear. God's bear. You're thinking of Bjorn, <laughs> Bjorn Borg. Yeah. I see where you're going with that. Okay. We're on the same page. Good save. In a blowout game, there's Willis selling out. Yep. They do things a certain way here, and they do it that way all the time. Landry Shamit. He's a great three-point shooter. Hasn't had many looks in this game. 27 straight with a three, and that ties the school record for Shamit. Held by? Oh, uh, yeah, the, Baker. of course. The shot maker. Fall away three is down for Riller, and again, you mentioned it, second half, he's come alive. Oh, really? He's, he's knocking it in in the second half. He's got 17 on 6 of 11. That's his first made three. Shocker is being led by the 18 for Morris, 18 and 10 for him, 14 for Willis, 10 for Frankamp, Nurser 14, there's Shamit, tying Baker's school record. How good was that backcourt duo? Oh, Fred Van Vliet and Ron Baker, you talk about toughness and winners and competitors. They might not have fit the uh, the NBA paradigm of what the, their position entails in the NBA, but they're both playing in the NBA. Am, am I crazy when Shamit's fully 100% to say that Fran Camp and, and Shamit is not that far off in no. terms of the, the talented backcourt combo? No, I think they are. Five and a half to play. 75-47 Shockers. Pointer wouldn't go and a foul on the rebound. At this juncture of the game, with this much time left, and uh, you know he's played most of his players already has Greg Marshall. Sometimes you start fooling around with different defenses, experiment with some plays that you might not run during the normal uh, part of a game, and you can afford to do that when you have big leads. And he's used to having big leads. They average one year in this building defeating their opponents by 35 <laughs> points a game. How about that? You'll take it. They beat UMKC in the building, 109-57 Friday. And uh, another dominant performance. They assisted on 26 of their 39 field goals in the opener. Wow. That was their largest halftime lead in, in, in program, modern history of the program. 62 to 23 was the halftime lead. Yikes. I mean, you're talking about a team that, hey, a lot of preseason hype that, that is not falling for the pitfalls of that, right? I mean, they're, they're saying, all right, we're going to go out and show that we're the number one or number two or number three team. Well, I think Greg Marshall instills this personal stuff with his team and in terms of basketball things. You know, they don't they don't overdo the personal, but when they got beat by Illinois State last year at Illinois State, and then they came back and won by a large, large margin in this building, that was sort of a statement. Willis wouldn't go. They won every league game after that, won the Missouri Valley Tournament. Their next loss was in the round of 32. To Kentucky. Yep. 17 and 1 in their conference last year. It was a travesty. They got a 10 seed as Pointer rolls it in. But they, you know what? That's not going to happen now that they're in the American. You wouldn't think. I agree. They're going to play some stiffer competition. Yeah, the other thing that probably won't happen is one loss, you know, those one and two loss conference slates every year going, you know, 17 and 1, 16 and 2. It's uh, less like that. Although, who knows? Yeah, exactly. 
But it could happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's like, what, what am I saying? I got to get a hold of myself. I mean, this, this team looks like a team that I wouldn't put it past them. Seventy-five, fifty-three, three thirty-nine left. What a credit, Charleston, for putting together some nice offensive sets here down the stretch of this game. Showing some signs, something at least to build on. Yeah, the, the challenge for Coach Grant after this game is to erase the game from their memories. No doubt about that. When you get uh, this far behind, this late. <laughs> you got happy faces. <laughs> this shocker smoking here tonight at home. Shaquille Morris is having a great day. 18 points, 10 rebounds, and 25 floor burns. Dives on the floor. Listen to the crowd. Think they appreciate this guy? Listen in. Eighteen points, ten boards. He's a player. Shaquille Morris is fun to watch. Got a comparison for you, Al Jefferson. Ah, there you Al go. Jefferson there now with go. Indiana in the NBA. I got some help from the truck on that one, but no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> That's what happens when you have an NBA guy producing your games. <laughs> Willis short on the free throw. Um, but I tell you, they got it all. Uh, this is uh, it's an easy night to say that, right? But I, I'm I'm really anticipating the Maui Invitational at, uh, next week. And they're not gonna live and die. The season isn't gonna be based on that. But I'm interested to see just if they're able to run the table in that tournament. Because there's some good teams in there. No doubt about it. A lot of good teams. Always fun of these holiday tournaments, huh? They prepare you for the NCAA <laughs> tournament. They really do. We've got a few of them right here on CBS Sports Network starting next week as well. They're starting this weekend. O.C. Smart. They like his upside. Young kid in there, post player. Getting some minutes here late. Redshirt freshman from Nigeria. Nurture back down on Harris. Against the double, gets fouled. You and I will be back here December 22nd, right before Christmas, against Florida Gulf Coast. That's a pretty good mid-major. Yeah, they are uh, picked to win the Atlantic Sun this year, and of course they made a dent in the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago, and their coach Andy Enfield uh, turned that into the Southern California job. And they're ranked 10th, and they play uh, coming up later tonight. Well deserved breather for Willis. Sham it to the bench as well. Fifteen and five for Nurture. Off the shocker bench. Their depth is a strength. So these nine or ten guys who play in this game, they get significant minutes, not just cleanup duty. So they will be able to play in the games when they're against Cincinnati, Connecticut. And looks like a little bit of a zone action right here. One, three, one variety. Miller got fouled. You said Michigan State earlier, your favorite. Yeah, Michigan State is really, uh, I mean, they, with Miles Bridges coming back and the players they had last year, it was a great class. And then they added the other big kid this year, Jackson. So, uh, and they have Ward. So they have three guys in the paint who can really play. So Bridges will really move to the three spot probably. And, uh, you know, he would be the top five pick in the NBA draft last year, no doubt. You know, my flight tomorrow goes through Chicago. Maybe I stick around for the nighttime, that big doubleheader, Kansas, Kentucky. Yeah. In Chicago and then Michigan State Duke. That'll be good stuff. Fun night of college basketball. Chile knocks it in. Go. I'll be interested to see with that great freshman class, plus Grayson Allen coming back for Duke. Interesting. Let's be a fun early season game at Duke Michigan State. Go. 
Lucy Smart, good block, kept it alive. And now Chile drills it. 77-57, two to play. It's only a 20-point game that felt like it was a 40-point game. Yeah. Maybe if you're uh, Will Grant, just plug in the second half of the tape. Haynes Jones pulls up and banks it in. Well, if I'm Coach Grant, what I want to do after this game is forget about it and uh, show maybe uh, some clips of the second half, certainly not the first half. Riller of the guarded jumper and fouled by Haynes Jones. They were up 33, right? Yep, that was the largest. Riller at the line shooting two. And you get Haynes Jones is going to get coached up a little bit, but you can see the upside. But you've you've also picked out some things that obviously Coach Marshall has seen tonight as well. Well, he's only played two games so far in Division One, and and he has ability, and he has speed, and he has intelligence. And so his judgment is the thing that he's made some plays that his judgment wasn't good, but uh, I'm sure that that will improve the more he gets to play. Shard Kelly, Nurser, and he traveled. Midgard was. Trying to get a post touch there. I'm glad that we had the, uh, the speech that Greg Marshall did with his team before the game. He got me fired up. You know, he said the only way we can lose this game is if they play smarter than us and play harder than us. And he's and he asked the question, are they going to do that? And of course they all <laughs> said no. And uh, they didn't play harder or smarter, but uh, the College of Charleston did play hard. But uh, the more talented team played hard also and intelligently and skillfully. He also said relish the moment, relish the opportunity. These fans are coming out, and they deserve everything out of you. The, the, the support here has been unbelievable, and he's king. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, again, we, we, we talk about this a lot. He's had opportunities, and will have opportunities to go other places. Now, why the heck would you? I mean, <laughs> at least right now. I know there's perhaps a bigger paycheck here there, but he gets a nice paycheck in a, in a great city where he is a big time hero. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it's it's part of the culture of the community. Well, we've seen great coaches go to big places in three or four years down the line. You go to a place in the ACC, and if you don't win enough, and it's hard to get wins in a league like that, you you're out the door. 30 seconds to play. Shockers by 21. They'll begin 2 0 with wins over UMKC and the College of Charleston. And the Cougars will fall to 1 1. I have seen nothing in this game that makes me think that they are not the sixth ranked team in the nation. That's for sure. More will be learned next week when they're in Hawaii playing on a neutral court. And of course, most of what will be learned is when they get into the thick of the American Athletic Conference schedule. Chile 17. Chile averaged 17 last year, all year long. He's a senior, the player of the year preseason in the conference. Riller led them with 20, Charleston, but it's the Shockers with five and double figures, led by Morris's double-double. The pupil and the teacher. Exchanging pleasantries following sixth ranked Wichita State's 81 63 win in the College of Charleston. We're going to hear from Coach Marshall and Shaq Morris after the game. 
back in Wichita. The number six shockers take down Charleston 81-63. Bob is standing by with a victorious head coach. Six in the nation today. There was nothing in this game that I saw that would disrupt that or make me think otherwise. What was your feelings about today's performance? I thought we played very well for 24, 25 minutes, and then uh, I thought Earl Grant's team didn't quit. They kept fighting and uh, really won the second half. But So we got. I, I still have some work to do to try to get them closer to 40 minutes. We know that you're playing in a tournament in Hawaii coming up. What are your feelings about playing there? When you went to the Final Four, you played in Cancun and won that, beat Iowa in the final. Is there? Is this a similar scenario? Well, it'd be nice to win it because there's going to be great teams there. We start with Cal, Marquette, VCU, the Notre Dame, uh, Michigan on the other side. Uh, we have to play three very good games, better than we did the last 15 minutes tonight, more like the first 25. That would be good enough, but we've got to elongate that to make it more like a 40-minute performance. Talk a little bit about the performance of this guy next to you, Shaq Morris. How was he tonight? He's so tremendously skilled. He can shoot it. He can pass it. He's got nimble feet for a big guy. Knows our system better than I do. When he's engaged and fresh, he's really, really good. And we need him to do that more like 32 minutes instead of 22. Thanks a lot, Coach. We appreciate it. We'll talk to Shaq now. Congratulations on a great game tonight. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. We, we, the thing that we showed many times, we like to show the threes of you shooting the threes, but the thing that we liked most was the diving on the floor. Talk about your co total commitment to playing. I mean, that's just a part of our system. We uh, we work on just getting down, getting grimy, getting dirty, and working and doing the, the dirty work. So, you know, that's just – being here five years and knowing our program and what we need to do and those are just winning plays. Okay. Talk a little bit about the three-point shot. Now I saw you we did some of your games last year and you you shot some there, but you seem a lot more comfortable this year with it. The whole offseason just working on it, you know, my senior year is something I wanted to add to my game and coach Marshall allowed me to do that and so now I'm knocking them down pretty well. All right, talk about uh, Willis's game. He played very, very well in this one. Marcus McDuffie is not playing right now. He's injured, so Daryl is really playing that spot. Yeah, Daryl Willis is really stepping up at the four spot for uh, Marcus McDuffie being out, and uh, he's executing the system and doing a lot of things that we need at that position, and uh, you got to give him all the credit for being the type of player he is. Congratulations on a great game today, Shaq. Enjoyed watching you. Good luck. Thank you. Shaq Morris, 18 points, 10 boards. Nurser had 16, Willis 14. And the guard, the Juco All-American, Haynes Jones, seven points, seven assists. The Shockers win by 18. The Shockers are 2-0. Oh. For Bob Wenzel and our entire CBS crew, I'm Brent Stover. So long from Wichita. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Surf's up now as we send you to the World Surf League across the pond in Portugal.